Hello, welcome to another Pedal Out video. So today we're going to talk about why the Lotus Evora might not be as reliable a car as you would first think. You can find us on Instagram. There's loads of pictures of the Lotus on Instagram. Um, and click the subscribe button. Don't forget to click the little bell icon so you get notified whenever I, on the odd occasion that I do manage to load up another car video. Uh, if you like this video, also give it a thumbs up and tell me about it. Give me a uh, write in the comments, preferably something positive, and feel free to slate my um, flat cap. I am from the north originally, so I reserve every right to eat pies and wear a flat cap. I draw the line at carrier pigeons and whippet dogs. Okay, so on to the video. Okay, so let's talk about the reasons why I bought this car in the first place. Before I do that, let me just explain. I'm wearing a cap because I haven't had my hair cut for weeks on end because we're sort of still in lockdown in the UK. So reasons for buying this car, the reviews around this car are very complimentary towards its handling. It's convenient because it has a two plus two layout so you can squeeze just about two kids in the back and you get exemplary performance. <laughs> and also really, really stunning, good supercar, mini supercar look. However, it's important for me, whenever I own a car, to bond with it. It, it needs to endear itself towards me. And for whatever reason, I'm really sorry to say, with the Evora, that never really happened. Don't get me wrong, it's not all doom and gloom with the Avor. I've had some very good times and I can remember fondly uh, rocking up to various either car parks, petrol stations and people being extremely complimentary towards it. More and more positive comments uh, wherever I've kind of parked or left this car than any sort of negative comments, which is a, a really, really nice, nice thing. <laughs> some of its quirks can actually be part of its appeal. So early Avoras were tricky to get in and out of. It's, it's mid-engined and you can kind of feel that. You kind of low down, you've got the engine behind you. That's kind of, that's, that's supercar stuff. You've got a very thin rear letterbox um, screen at the back. It's probably less visibility in this car than a lot of very more expensive supercars, but that kind of adds to the appeal of the Evora. You feel like you are in, it's not a supercar, but you do feel a bit like you're in a mini supercar. used to or if you've been used to driving German and Japanese cars the overall package of the Evora and the Lotus everything combined together just doesn't quite fit and when something does go a little bit wrong and you've got to get it fixed I, I can get that I'm used to cars not going wrong but having kind of foibles quirks whatever you want to call it and getting them fixed and spending a bit of money on them that's just normal with any kind of car and you do your research you go on groups forums and you find those things out and you kind of can be accepting of them but with this car what seemed to happen was they just sort of came one after the other i never planned on using this car daily or doing lots and lots of miles in it in fact i've only done in the nearly two and a half years i've owned it five thousand miles which is nothing at all really but during those five thousand miles every time i got one thing fixed and thought great i can do a bit more driving in it some other niggle or some other problem kind of reared its ugly head and went a bit wrong and soured it a little bit which is a real shame 
So reading the reviews of this car when I first bought it, and you'll hear this a lot, and, and actually it's, it's one of the great things about the Evora is its engine, and one of the arguably not so great things is its engine. So an ex as an example, I've just waxed lyrical about all of the great compliments about that I've had with this car. There have been a couple of, and a couple, a, a handful, but they do stick in your gut negative comments and largely they're focused around the engine because uh, it's a Toyota unit derived from a Camry. Uh, it's been written about, it's been documented, everybody knows etc. Lotus have tuned it in this version added the supercharger and subsequently developed it further in later editions. However people don't ever forget that and I once arrived, I kid you not, at a piston heads meet at BMW Farnborough in the multi-story car park there great great events normally full of motoring guys enthusiasts and all the rest of it and one guy said to me with the window down not directed at me obviously thought i couldn't hear him something along the lines of nice toyota mate and you're like okay <laughs> okay uh, other than the engine this car shares very few components with any toyota having driven many toyotas and lexus and other toyota products I can strongly testify this car does not uh, behave in any way, shape or form like a Toyota. But uh, it does have that Toyota engine. Now, you might think that having a Toyota engine would make this car reliable, as to some extent did I. Uh, however, dropping a Toyota engine in what is essentially a Lotus doesn't always work as you would expect. ask what has gone wrong with it what has gone wrong with it well uh, when I first got it the wheel arch liners common problem the kind of brackets that hold them on rust through so they need to be corrected that wasn't too bad I got that done the uh, gear knob leather had worn so I got that replaced with a nice chrome model they they use these on the later models again not massively costly stuff also got the um, aircon regassed so apparently uh, this car had a, uh, not apparently, it did have a new clutch gearbox and limited slip differential fitted to it shortly before I bought it, largely because it had exploded on track. And I'll, I'll, I'll make this point quite clear, this car at some point has been around a track, but it's a Lotus, they should be able to handle it, no problem I thought. A lot of work done to sort of fix it. And as part of that fix, they did gas the aircon. However, when I got it, for whatever reason, um, I think I think it leaked out essentially. Anyway, I needed to get the aircon gas regassed. So what you might say, and so what indeed, not a massive issue, and it wasn't. And that is, for the most part, um, where all the sort of initial issues um, kind of were, and and they're not big things, so that was kind of okay. What then happened was slightly more of a problem in that the uh, catalytic converters on this car um, didn't implode they disintegrated um, so if you look at the design or the picture of uh, an engine the Toyota Camry engine that goes in these cars the catalytic converters sit the manifolds or the uh, and the com catalytic converters sit so close to the engine um, it kind of puts them at risk so when you're driving this car hard and they heat up um, those the insides the honeycomb insides of your catalytic converter wear out pretty quick can you see that looks like beautiful uh, beehive-esque um, thing but actually it's not it's the inside of a catalytic converter it's like um, the car has got gallstones and it's peed them out finally this I can only assume was spat out of the exhaust this I can only assume got so hot when I was doing the track day was causing the rattle this subsequently since driving it is what's now throwing the error code I suspect the catalytic converter on the car is screwed. Um, it's such a problem that 
uh, a lot of aftermarket exhaust producers for the um, Evora and the, this V6 have um, come up with uh, kits to kind of bypass that so they put decap pipes on it and they put a single sports cat on further down the kind of exhaust pipe network well away from the engine so that you don't ingest any broken catalytic converter into your engine which would be a bad thing anyway on one bank of the engine on this car the catalytic converter exploded disintegrated thankfully none of the bits went into the car cost of replacing one of those catalytic converters with a genuine Lotus part, this is a Toyota engine remember, £1,000. If you're going to do one, it, it's pertinent to do the other because the chances are if one's crumbled, the other's going to crumble. Maybe not because maybe one side of the engine's hotter than the other. Anyway, £2,000. That's, that's cost price, actually probably more when you add VAT on without it being fitted. Now, again, fitting the things when you've got a Toyota engine and mounted in the mid-engine car is very, very tricky. You have to take the back seat out, there's an access panel in there, uh, and fit them that way. Somewhere in there is our manifold we have to get off. It's gonna be fun. Not however impossible so the solution i did was i actually bought a uh, slightly a risky option arguably a used set of catalytic converters and fitted them myself or fitted one at least well after much wrangling we got this cat off okay can you see in there what can you see in there that is where there should be a catalytic converter you can see the oxygen sensor down there there is no catalytic converter mesh in there at all. It's destroyed the lock. This is the second hand one we're putting on. You can see, full of uh, catalytic converter. So I failed to fit the other one simply because I couldn't get um, into the right bit of the engine to get the manifold off to fit the new one on. I was able, as a result of that, to um, put uh, a check on the O2 sensors pre and post before and after the cat to do the uh, graph to make sure that actually what I'd spent my money on, I think I spent two, three hundred pounds on a used set of cats instead of two thousand pounds on a new set, uh, had worked and fortunately it did. Anyway, so fitting those cats, um, arguably what somebody should have done or what probably a lot of people do is put an aftermarket exhaust on like I said with the straight through pipes and the single sports cap further down that's great however if you do that it's probably going to cost you about four thousand pounds now I don't mind spending a bit of money on an aftermarket exhaust but again for an, a car with an engine that is a Toyota engine car four thousand pounds is just it just seemed like a lot of money to me and again I'm used to don't get me wrong I'm used to owning expensive cars I've had M3s sports cars Mercedes Porsches in the past I'm used to big bills but throwing 4k uh, principally just an exhaust for this car just seemed like a, a, too much money to me so I didn't do it I went with the used option that fixed it and this is where the sort of story and the progression and the problems kind of go with the Lotus and it, it just kind of annoyed me a little bit because what happened after that was um, where the exhaust, those manifolds come down from the engine and connect to a downpipe, it's called a downpipe, they go into one pipe underneath, that pipe has a bit of flexi pipe on it, it's just an ex exhaust tube with a bit of flexi pipe. That had um, loosened or the flexi wrap had kind of um, uh, worn more quickly because of the jiggling of the exhaust to get the new manifolds with the caps in on. And as a result, that flexi pipe started to blow. Now, in itself, that flexi pipe is probably, I don't know, 40, 50 quids worth of flexi pipe attached to a bit of other pipe. It's not a dear item, really, or shouldn't be. And uh, sure, there are aftermarket exhausts, repairers, manufacturers, and fabricators who probably could have fabricated or welded a bit of flexi pipe onto the existing pipe. Um, and I probably, arguably, could have got that done. However, um, I'm a bit of a stickler for kind of OEM parts and making sure the car's correct. So I didn't go down that route. What I did instead was bought the spare downpipe myself. Lotus part again, cost 
£413. So there you go, a bit of pipe with a bit of flexi pipe on it on what should be, what everybody tells you, is a Toyota engine car, which you think, well, it's gonna be cheap to service because it's gonna just need the same air filters and spark plugs and all the rest of it that Toyota Camry would. Yeah, true. But for whatever reason, the exhaust and all the other ancillary bits coming off it, they're all a little bit different. And as a consequence, when you wanna fix them, they cost a lot of money. So 413 pounds, I think, a lot of money for that part. Um, at that point, I'd kind of lost patience with getting underneath the car. I've got a pit in the garage, which is quite handy, um, but I'd lost patience with um, unbolting and bolting on exhausts. So I actually paid to have uh, that downpipe fixed. And again, this is all, all these things went um, on during the ownership of the car. So um, they sound like simple fixes, but um, months is going on in between these times, simply because I'm researching other options, deciding what to do, sort of making my mind up about aftermarket exhaust whether to keep the car invest in it etc so it's always a, a tricky thing but and, and not doing the miles but all the time you're not using it you kind of fall a bit more out of love with it and you start to resent it which is a real shame and and that's just how I feel but and I'm sorry about that because I did want to love this and I get I get it I get the Lotus bug um, and I get why people love them and I'm not gonna say this will be my last Lotus I ever own it probably won't I'd love to be able to own one in the future So, after the downpipe, got that fixed, got it serviced as well. Um, That's all fine. And actually, I was looking forward for the first time in a long time. I uh, hadn't decided to sell the car at that point. Thought about it, was thinking about it, but thought, no, give it another chance. We've, we've done these things now. You know, it's again, more money, but it's fine. You know, cars go wrong. You know, hopefully now we'll get a few thousand miles of driving out of this car um, which is what I want to just use it just to use and enjoy it um, but that didn't happen uh, what went wrong next was the starter motor um, now, again similar story with a starter motor you think Toyota starter motor can't be that expensive right uh -uh, wrong looked at the part starter motor part Lotus part looked at the model number researched it looked at alternatives looked from ones available in America used ones you name it could not find one anywhere looked for the replacement solenoid uh, I fixed the um, the bit the brushes bit uh, with a cheap 14 quid part however which refurbed it essentially um, so I, I managed to do that but realized at that point that it, that wasn't just the bit that was broken actually the solenoid itself was faulty um, couldn't find uh, just the solenoid for that particular make and model of starter motor again so back to Lotus starter motor again supposedly a Toyota engine I don't mind buying starter motors for cars I must admit it's the first one I've bought on a car in many a long time I think the last one was in a Cavalier that I had in the 90s um, so again I always sort of assume starter motors you get a lot of life out of them certainly in a eight nine year old car Toyota engine car with 50,000 miles on it, I would have expected the starter motor to last a long time. It didn't, and it's another 400 quid odd item. Again, ordered it, actually managed to fit that myself. Great news, so starter motor fitted. Um, brilliant, but again, you know, just leaving that sour taste in your mouth, Toyota engine car, you're thinking it should be reliable, should have been reliable. Everybody told me it was. Um, and you know you've, you've just had this other problem with it I do believe similarly to the cats and the position of them off the engine the starter motor suffers the same fate as that I think it takes on too much heat from the engine when you're using the car and therefore they wear out prematurely so you've got this Toyota engine if you're looking for an Evora just be aware of these things Toyota engine is superb and reliable fitted in a big bonnet under a Camry that's easy to get at that hasn't been chewed for a Lotus and shoved in the mid-engine mid position of a car I'm guessing he's great fun and dead easy to work on whereas you tune it for Lotus supercharge it it gets hot all the other weaknesses of the engine around it sort of get exposed that's my view anyway um, and again all of those things added up over a period of two and a half years and just 5,000 miles that's part of the reason why I kind of didn't bond with the car which I'm sorry to say 
Consequently, the car is right now for sale um, on a specialist online auction website that isn't the one you're thinking of, and um, it's due to end tomorrow. So we will be selling this car. And just before I sold it as well, sorry, just before I'd made that decision, I'd replaced the starter motor, again thinking that'll be it, off we go, we can use this car. Um, uh, there's kind of a, I'm gonna say rattle, a uh, bearing seems to be uh, making a bit of a noise it kind of is in sync with the serpentine belt to some extent and I think that's that's what it is and I can just it's not that obvious actually but I'm just aware of it I can hear it and it's kind of a little bit annoying so uh, that sort of creeped in um, but again just just another thing and I'm like well come on I just like to do some miles and enjoy this car for a bit um, and everything else is going on in um, my life personally meant, has meant that um, it's time for this car to go. Um, it's not something that I want necessarily to put, although it has had uh, new brakes on it quite recently. It's not a car that I want, Ferrari's coming past. It's not a car that I want to put any more money to, into in terms of buying tires and things like that. So um, it is with a little bit of regret, pang of regret, that it's time to sell the Aurora. So this is the last video I'm going to do of it. Anyway, thanks for watching this pedal out video. Find us on Instagram. There's loads of pictures of the Lotus on Instagram. Um, and click the subscribe button. Don't forget to click the little bell icon so you get notified whenever I, on the odd occasion that I do manage to load up another car video. Uh, if you like this video, also give it a thumbs up and tell me about it. Give me a uh, write in the comments, preferably something positive. And feel free to slate my um, flat cap. I am from the north originally, so I reserve every right to eat pies and wear a flat cap. I draw the line at carrier pigeons and whippet dogs.